Lesson 4 is on the second part of biochemistry. And there is a lecture with this lesson, so you should be ready to take notes. You should have already done your textbook reading. You should have already written down and defined all of your terms. In this lesson, I'll be discussing some of the concepts that I think are more difficult to understand. That's usually what I try to do in the lectures, is just discuss those kind of topics. In biology, there's just lots and lots of memorization with concepts that aren't necessarily very difficult to understand, but occasionally there are. And here, I'll be talking about the kinetic theory, about diffusion, and about osmosis. Well, first, let's talk about the kinetic theory. And the kinetic theory, basically, that just states that particles are in constant motion. For example, let's just draw a box. And let's pretend like that was just like a solid block of wood. Now, that block that may be, look like it's just sitting there doing nothing, but within it, are little molecules, little particles of wood. And we could consider those as constantly moving. They're not like jumping around all over the place, but one next to the other. Let's just like draw a little bit bigger picture of two molecules. They're vibrating and just moving about next to each other. They're not like spinning around each other or anything, but those two molecules, they would just be vibrating next to each other, vibrating back and forth. So even though to us it looks like they're not moving, they really are. Now some different particles are moving more than others. Like in a gas, particles are moving all over the place. In a solid, they're just vibrating next to each other. Now the kinetic theory, that's just that idea that particles are in constant motion. Understanding that can help us understand ideas like diffusion and osmosis. In diffusion, what happens there is say you had like some perfume. Maybe you sprayed some perfume in one corner of your room. And let's just put some perfume molecules. We'll just make these dots represent those. And then let's say here's one. Your room is shaped like that, like a rectangular shape. Now, over time, those molecules of perfume, they will start to diffuse. And they'll spread out to all different corners of a room. And, for example, have you ever done that sprayed perfume and then you can smell it in another part of your room later on, even though you just sprayed it in one corner? That's what diffusion is. It's the movement of those particles. They'll spread out and they'll evenly fill a space. They'll be evenly distributed throughout that space in a matter of time. Now, in our diffusion example, those particles of perfume, those were free to move wherever they wanted with inside that space. Osmosis, that's kind of like diffusion, except the particles are not always free to move wherever they want to. For example, let's make two containers that are separated by a channel, basically. And let's say they both have some kind of liquid inside of them. And we can like put a, a water level mark inside each one. And then let's say that they are separated by a membrane like saran wrap or some kind of membrane. Now let's say that in one side in the container on the left there were two different sizes of particles besides just the water particles that are in there, the water molecules. And the red ones those could pass through that semi-permeable membrane that we have there in the middle, that red line that we've drawn. Now, a semi-permeable membrane, that means it's semi or partly permeable. Some things can go through it and some things can't. And so those yellow molecules, whatever those may be, those cannot pass through this membrane, but the red ones can. And they'll pass through that membrane by diffusion. Now, what do you think would happen? Do you think that this would happen here, that after a certain amount of time, all of those red particles would end up on the other side? Well, no, that's really not what would happen. After a certain amount of time, they would try to evenly distribute themselves between the two containers. Just like in our perfume example of diffusion, the particles would spread out. You squirt a bottle of perfume in one corner of the room, the particles will spread out to try to evenly fill up the room. And that's 
what happens when particles diffuse. So osmosis is diffusion of particles through a semi-permeable membrane. They move from a region where they're more highly concentrated to a region where they're less concentrated. Now, do you think once they're there, they just sit and stay? Well, remember the kinetic theory. Particles are in constant motion. So that means these red particles will be moving from the left to the right side, and then also from the right to the left. And all the while, they're maintaining as constant values as they can on both sides. That's what's called homeostasis, or a dynamic equilibrium. There's an equilibrium amount. There's equal amounts in both sides, but it's a dynamic equilibrium. They're moving back and forth because particles are in constant motion. That's just a really important process to understand. That happens so much in biological environments and biological organisms. Now, we really haven't talked about water in this example, but water is usually the main thing that moves through a semi-permeable membrane. And it's just kind of hard to understand water as being a concentration. For example, in our original picture that we had, we had a higher concentration of solute particles on the left side. Now, in terms of water, we had less water on the left and more water on the right. So on the right side, we had a higher concentration of water. And so even though we don't have little dots representing the water molecules, we know that water would be moving to the left. It would be moving from an area of higher to lower concentration. That's what happens in osmosis. Particles move from an area of higher to lower concentration. Just like in diffusion, you squirt a bottle of perfume. There's a highly concentrated amount of perfume molecules. Those move out to areas of lower concentration until there's an equal distribution. But they don't just stop moving. They're still moving from place to place. It's just a dynamic equilibrium now. Equal quantities everywhere, but they're still moving. Hence the name dynamic or motion equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. Let's talk about one more concept that is sometimes difficult to understand. That's called activation energy. Now, what we've been talking about is diffusion and osmosis. That just has to do with movements of particles in solutions through semi-permeable membranes. Activation energy, this has to do with how chemicals react. And look at these different examples I have here, A, B, and C. And just think of the red circle as a ball. You're rolling it from position one to position two. Now, which one of those would be the easiest to get to position two? Which one would take the least amount of energy to get from position one to position two or to roll the ball from position one to position two? Well, hopefully you can pretty obviously tell that that would be A. This one is just a flat line there, a flat road, and it would be the easiest one to get from position one to position two. Now, a way to think about this is two chemicals reacting as well. We could think of it that way. Position one could be the two chemicals unreacted. Position two could be their products that form from the reaction. To get from position one to position two sometimes takes a little bit of extra energy. You have to get over a hill first before you can get to position two or get the products. And that's what activation energy is. And a good way to think about that is like lighting a spark to start a gas stove. Maybe you have a gas stove at your house or you have a camp stove that you use when you go camping. And you have to have a match or some kind of spark to activate that combustion and to get the flame going. And it starts the activation or the starts the reaction of that gas with the oxygen in the air. Once you activate it, though, it continues on by itself. And so like those two circles that I have over to the right, say those were two molecules, a yellow one and a blue one, those are two different molecules, they may need some extra energy or some activation energy to get them to react with each other. Two things in a reaction that are really important are that the two things that are reacting, or there may be more than two, but in this case there's just two, the collision between them in order to get them to react it must be forceful enough so they basically have to run into each other and 
they have to be oriented properly. They have to be in the right position so that they can react properly. And that's what a catalyst can do. That's another word I want to discuss. A catalyst, basically what it does is it helps speed up a reaction, but it itself is not changed. It's a kind of chemical. This catalyst will help two or more different elements or compounds combine, and it will make their combination forceful enough and properly oriented so that they do react. Your body, as well as all living organisms, are full of catalysts, and those are enzymes. And we'll talk about those more in the next lesson. So catalysts, what those do is help speed up a reaction. They give it the required activation energy that it needs. But the catalyst itself does not change. It does not become a different chemical. As in the two chemicals that reacted, they form a new chemical. Okay, well that's all for the lecture, and the next part will be the review question solution, so go ahead and pause the CD, do your review questions, and then turn the CD back on and check your answers. Let's go ahead and look at the solutions to the Lesson 4 review questions. Number 1 is energy. Number 2 as a skier travels downhill, his potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. Number three is activation. Number four is motion. Number five is first. Number six is second. Number seven is temperature. Number eight is osmosis. Nine, endothermic. Ten, acids and bases have a pH greater than neutral. 11 hydrochloric, 12 buffers, and 13 neutral pH is 7. Question 14, two reasons osmosis is important in living organisms are 1. It enables them to absorb nutrients from their surroundings, and 2. It enables them to eliminate waste products. And then in question 15, you're supposed to use arrows to show the direction of motion of solute particles in figure 1 and figure 2. So if you look at figure 1 and you have that semi-permeable membrane, you can assume that the particles are moving from A to B, an area of higher to lower concentration. And then in figure 2, that's representing two equal concentrations basically. So there's a dynamic equilibrium set up. You need to, you can't just say that there was no movement. There's a dynamic equilibrium where there's equal amounts moving from A to B and then also from B to A. And so you can use a line with arrows on both ends to represent movement in both directions. Okay, well that's all for lesson four.